Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation. In this presentation I want to have a look at the a second proof of the total energy stored in a capacitor. In the in part one of this uh, presentation we found that if you charge a capacitor, if here is a voltage source and you charge a capacitor usually through a resistor, so this is R and this is C, this is the current I, we found that if you charge this capacitor through a resistor that the total energy stored in, capa in the capacitor was given by one half, uh, one half one over C times Q squared and this is one of the ways of uh, writing this, this formula but we also know that the capacitance is equal to the charge divided by the voltage so we can write charge in terms of capacitance and voltage just like this and then if you substitute this into this equation you see that energy is equal to half times 1 over the capacitance times capacitance squared times voltage squared and this is 1 half CV squared and this is the energy and this is just another way of uh, writing the same formula and this is really the most common way of uh, writing the formula one usually doesn't use charge and so I just wanted to uh, give you this formula as well so you may be wondering what why is it that only half of the energy only half of the uh, of this term here is actually the energy stored in capacitor why is it not just one and the answer is that half of the energy actually gets dissipated as heat to the resistor heat here so we actually lose half of the energy on the resistor there is nothing we can do about this if you make the resistance smaller then there will be more current and just the the, the power dissipation is going to be higher and we are going to dissipate up the, 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 the energy uh, faster uh, because the current will be faster to, through the resistor and in fact if you remove the resistor altogether and you just have a normal uh, copper wire for example uh, the energy uh, half of the energy will be dissipated as uh, electromag electromagnetic radiation so they will become uh, uh, electromagnetic waves in the in the air and also some of it will be lost in the uh, in the conductor in the wires so in this video I want to give a second proof of this uh, formula here uh, in the previous video we saw that we derived this by writing that the differential of energy is equal to the voltage times the differential of charge and this can also be written as voltage times the current times the differential of time and this is because dq 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 is equal to the current times a small amount of time because charge is current times time so you can write also the e uh, is equal to vi dt and this this is what we're going to use in this uh, in this uh, presentation so we're going to use this one and we're going to use the solution to the differential equation that we obtained in a previous video if you have uh, missed that video please watch that to catch up so in that video we solved the, the differential equation to find out what was the voltage across the capacitor here the voltage V and we found that the voltage is equal to V naught minus V I times e to the minus T divided by R C plus V I where V naught is the initial voltage on the capacitor and V I is the final voltage for this example let's assume that V naught is actually zero so this will simplify our lives so this is simply equal to V I minus V I e to the minus T over R C and this is the voltage on the capacitor uh, now remember the element law for the capacitor I is equal to C dV by dt and from this we can calculate the current as a function of time in the capacitor by just differentiating this equation with respect to time so dV by dt is equal to if we differentiate, differentiate VI it's a constant so it becomes zero and here if we differentiate, differentiate this guy we get minus VI 
times minus 1 over RC times e to the minus t over RC. RC. So this minus and this minus cancel. So this is equal to VI over RC times minus times e to the minus t over RC. And this is dV by dt. So capacitance times this is equal to the current by this formula here. And so we can simplify this further. So I is equal to VI over R times E to the minus T by RC. And so now we have the current and the voltage. So we can plug that into this equation here. So this is the current and the voltage is this. So if we do this, we see that the differential of energy is equal to is equal to the voltage VI minus VI e to the minus T by RC times the current which is this here so VI over R e to the minus T by RC and now let me copy this copy this and put it down there so we have more space so this is the equation now that we are going to solve. So let's first simplify this a little bit. So here we can factor out this VI outside. So this is VI times, and we can also combine this VI in here. So this is VI squared, 1 minus e to the minus t by RC divided by R times e to the minus t by RC. So this is the E. And we also have a dt here. Now let's separate this into two terms. So this is equal to vi squared over r times e to the minus t by rc minus e to the minus 2t over rc. And this is because if you multiply these two, the exponents add. So this is minus 2t over rc. So this is what we have. And now we can integrate this with respect to time to get the final energy. So dE is equal to vi squared over r. And this is e to the minus t by rc minus e to the minus 2t by rc dt. So if we integrate this, just integrate this straight, so we get, here we get that this is the energy, and here we can factor out this outside the integral, and then we integrate this here. Now, we integrate this term by term, so what is the integral of this first term here? To integrate Remember that, remember that you integrate e to the a, um, e to the a x, sorry, dx, this is equal to 1 over a e to the a x. It's very useful to know, of course. And so we have to divide by minus 1 over rc, so this is 1 over minus 1 over rc, and we repeat the original function, minus t by rc. So this is the integral of this first term. And then the, here we have minus, and here to integrate this, we simply divide by minus 2 over RC. So this is 1 over minus 2 by RC, and e to the minus 2T by RC. And this is what we have. And one thing I forgot to mention is that the integral we, uh, is going to have limits. So we're going to use time, so we are integrating with respect to time. So we go from time equals zero, that's when the capacitor is on uncharged, and we go to time is equal to infinity, because the capacitor in uh, in theoretical terms it never really charges up completely. You have to go, time has to go to uh, infinity in order for the capacitor to charge up to charge up fully. So the limit has to be infinity, otherwise we'll be missing some of the charge. So here we write this as the limit from zero to infinity. And therefore, the energy is equal to VI squared over R 
and now we simplify this so here we have minus we have 1 over minus 1 over RC so this is minus RC so I have minus e to the mi e to the minus t over RC and then here this minus and this minus cancel so here is a plus and then this 1 over 2 over RC you simply invert this fraction here so this is RC over 2 and here we have e to the minus 2t over RC and again we have the limits from 0 to infinity close the bracket so the energy is equal to vi squared now this r here and this r cancel with this r so they go away and this c we can factor it outside so this is going to be vi squared times c and then we still have the inside so this is minus e to the minus t over rc here and here we have plus 1 over 2 e to the minus 2t over rc and we have the limits from 0 to infinity and so now we just simply now, now it's the time where we simply substitute the limits into here so e is equal to we just keep the constants outside so here this is a single function so we take the limits when t is equal to infinity when t is equal to infinity this is equal to e to the minus infinity so this is going to go to zero and so is this so we get here zero and then to take the lower limits you add the minus sign here and you just take the limits as t is zero on this function so when t is equal to zero here this is equal to minus one so it gets minus one and when t is equal to zero this is a half so plus a half close so this is equal to vi squared times c times now this minus one plus a half is equal to minus a half and this minus goes to plus a half so this is just a half and so again we have the results that the energy is equal to one half times c times vi squared so there we have it and this vi here is exactly the same as the v that we have upstairs so this is just simply equal to one half c times v because v is just the final voltage on the capacitor and so this is exactly the same formula that we had before so let me copy it here this here so let's copy it on here so this is equal to the energy and if you compare this to here this to this it is exactly the same except I forgot the square on there so this is squared and so as you can see we used a slightly different method uh, in order to calculate this so in the first method we didn't have to know the, the answer for the, the voltage around the capacitor we just simply use the fact that the energy is just simply equal to the voltage times charge but in this method we use the some more, some more information that we know and that was the by solving the differential equation and having the voltage uh, with respect to time for the capacitor so these are just two ways of solving the same problem and that's it for now and i hope you have enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching